Good morning and welcome to the 2014 Student Space Flight Experiments Program National Conference at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. My name is Mike Holslander and I'm the manager of on-site learning. I'm also a science education advisor and a member of the re review board for the SSEP, so I'm very familiar with many of your proposals. At the National Air and Space Museum, we are committed to educating and inspiring the nation about science and its historical importance uh, by several factors. Preserving and displaying space exploration artifacts and information of historic interest and significance. Developing educational materials and conducting programs, just like this one, to increase the public's understanding of and involvement in space exploration and conducting and disseminating new research in the study of space exploration and its related technologies. Your experiments and the information you plan to share with everybody today align perfectly with our objectives. The Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum stresses science, technology, engineering, and math education in support of a nationwide effort with everything we do. Our participation in the 2014 SSCP National Conference is one more example of our pledge to educate, inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, explorers, and hopefully history makers. With this in mind, I can think of no better place to hold this conference than at one of the world's premier facilities for space research and artifact collection, right here at the National Air and Space Museum. Now, I'd like, to take, I'd like you all to take a moment to think about what's going to happen at this conference over the next couple of days. You may not be aware of it, but this is truly an incredible opportunity you are being given. I would guess that many of the adults in this room, even those that might be scientists, have never presented at the Smithsonian Institution. You've all heard of the Smithsonian Institution. Almost everybody in the world has heard of the Smithsonian Institution. So this is really a big deal. Now, I'm not telling you this to make you nervous, okay? In fact, I want you to have fun while you are, you're up here. I want you to smile, okay? But I want you to realize what a big opportunity this is. Very few people in the world have gotten a chance to present at the Smithsonian Institution. And you are now joining a very special group of people. Your presentation today is a culmination of all the hard work you've done to get to this point. And I, for one, am incredibly proud of all of you. I didn't get this opportunity when I was your age, and I wish I would have. I think this opportunity for some people presenting at the Smithsonian Institution, for some people getting their experiment into space, is a career-making opportunity. So take full advantage of it the next couple of days. Well, with that, I'd like you to help me welcome the person that made this entire program possible, Dr. Jeff Goldstein, Center Director of the National Center for Earth and Space Science Education. Let's hear it for Jeff. Good luck. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the conference. Um, I thought I would start off by giving you some grounding and where this program came from. When we designed this initiative, we recognized that we wanted to provide an immersive experience, an authentic immersive experience in real research to students, mostly pre-college students. And the idea behind this was to recognize that as parents, we remember that there was this magical time when the unending stream of questions began when our children were first capable of expressing themselves. And as soon as they were capable of doing that, they started asking lots of questions because we are born curious. We're born to explore. And we're also born evidence-based learners in that even if you look at a baby, you'll see that a baby will try to poke their corner of the universe every way they possibly can and see what evidence the universe presents so that uh, that, that little human being has the ability to understand how the universe works and how they interact with it. So we're born curious, we're born evidence-based learners. Um, what's really remarkable, though, is that if you 
talk to professional scientists and engineers and ask, what is it that you do and get paid to do? Well, they're in the business of organized curiosity, asking smart questions and bringing powerful tools to bear, but they are still in the curiosity business. And they're also in the business of evidence-based learning for the entire human race, because when they poke the universe and see something wholly new, it takes the human race where we've never been before. And so what we're saying here is that um, what researchers actually do grows organically from what it means to be human. We are doing science every day of our lives. We may not recognize it as that. And through inquiry-based and evidence-based learning, we are navigating through our corner of the universe successfully. And so if that's true, why not allow our students to be immersed in exploration and journey right now? so that they can see all facets of research for themselves. And that's what this program is all about. And I can tell you that there are many um, colleagues of mine that are astrophysicists, geologists, uh, researchers, who are rather jealous of this because they never had this opportunity when they were your age. And I asked them, well, you know, when was the first time that you wrote a real proposal, a research proposal? They said, graduate school. When was the first time that you presented at a real research conference? They said graduate school. But do we have any researchers in the audience that are, say, in fifth or sixth grade right now? Why not? Congratulations. Is this cool? All right. So, so that's where this program came from, and this research conference is part of that authentic experience. Um, so let me now just give you a brief overview of where we've gone with this program. So if we could have the next slide, please. Um, so let me give you the track record here. Thus far, we've had eight SSEP flight opportunities since the program started in June 2010. Uh, we were on the last two space shuttle flights, STS-134 and 135, and SSEP missions one through six to the International Space Station. Eighty-four communities have participated to date across the U.S. and Canada. There have been 111 community programs. So you might say, well, 84 communities, 111 community programs. How does that work? Well, that's because 19 communities have participated in their second, third, fourth, or fifth flight opportunity already, already uh, re reflecting the sustainable nature of this program. And just as a benchmark, the largest mission participation to date in terms of communities uh, was mission six, and we just uh, selected the flight experiments for mission six. That was 18 communities representing 6,860 students. For mission seven, there are now at least 34 communities working to come aboard, uh, which is a little scary, quite frankly. It, it, we could have a, a conference double in size next year. And 13 are returning communities, which really goes to show that communities are adopting this program as a core, um, a, a core element in their STEM curriculum. Next slide. Um, with regard to participation thus far, 35,200 grade five through 15 students have been immersed in microgravity experiment design and proposal writing. 7,922 experiment proposals were submitted by student teams. And not counting mission six, there were 23,825 submissions for mission patch designs. Um, 81 experiments have flown. 15 mission five experiments are flying on orb two. The uh, no earlier than date is now July 11th. 2014 out of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. We are expecting during this conference that that is going to be locked in. Do we have any Mission 5 teams ready to fly? Um, we've got 18 Mission 6 experiments flying on Orb 3 in October 2014. We've held four conferences at NASA. Next slide, please. This is a summary of the missions, but I think what's really important is the, the left-hand side where you see space shuttles Endeavour and Atlantis. Those were the last flights of Endeavour and Atlantis. Those were our first two missions. We were on the last flight of the US space shuttle program. We were also on SpaceX D1, the first demonstration flight of the SpaceX Dragon vehicle. We were on the first operational flight of SpaceX, SpaceX-1 with Mission 2. We were on the first demonstration flight for Orbital Sciences Cygnus. We were on the first um, uh, operational flight of Orbital Sciences, Orbital 1, uh, for Mission 3, B, and 4. We're about to be on Orbital 2 and Orbital 3 for uh, Mission 5 and Mission 6. 
And so I think what's really amazing about this program, we are transitioning into the era of real commercial space flight, and we are all part of that new history. So uh, I think the last slide, I just wanted to say that um, we're only four years old. This program started on June 7, 2010, and I think we've done a remarkable amount of stuff in, in one undergraduate unit. Um, so happy birthday, SSEP. So now I'd like to uh, introduce somebody that makes this program absolutely possible. She is incredibly tireless in coordinating activities for uh, the, the, mission, the step two proposal review process, onboarding the experiments selected for flight for flight safety review, onboarding the flight configuration for the experiments, monitoring everything that's going on on the International Space Station and making sure that all of those crew interactions are passed back to the student teams. Our very own flight operations manager, Stacy Hamill. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to tell all of you just how grateful I am to be a part of this journey with you. Um, it's really remarkable the things that you guys have accomplished. I stand in awe of you as student researchers. It is my honor and privilege to um, represent you guys at the national side of this program. I wanna thank you, send a thank you to the teacher facilitators and the community directors for working tirelessly and going above and beyond. We know how tired you guys are and how hard you work in the classroom every day. And I send you hundreds of emails throughout a flight asking for um, you guys to meet all of the regulations that are required. It's not easy to get something to the International Space Station. There's a lot of red tape and you guys do it remarkably well. So I just wanna thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoy your conference today. So let me say one last thing in closing this out. Could we have all of the SSEP student researchers stand? This is the next generation of scientists and engineers. And while you're standing, can we have all of the teachers and administrators that made this program possible at the local level stand? And I think one last group that needs to stand are all of the parents that support these students in what they're trying to do with their lives. Welcome to the conference.